First up, it happened after September 11th, after the Sandy Hook Elementary School massacre, and after the Boston Marathon bombing. Conspiracies and theories that each was a faked, a hoax, and actors were involved. Now it's happened again after the shooting deaths of 17 people at the Marjorie Stoneham Douglas School in Parkland, Florida last week, raising a thorny issue for the press. The far-fetched theory that some of the student survivors of last week's mass murder are actors got momentum this week through a YouTube video purporting to show that 17-year-old David Hogg is just a crisis actor, a kid jumping from one disaster to another. The conspiracies first surfaced Monday when the fringe website Gateway Pundit posted videos and articles accusing Hogg of memorizing what they call lines when he stumbled on camera. And the conspiracy got another boost from Donald Trump Jr., who liked to tweet suggesting another theory, that Hogg was trying to protect the FBI. The fact that Donald Trump Jr. liked that post is disgusting to me, but it's also false. More fodder for crackpots. David Hogg appeared in an unrelated video that got a lot of attention last summer. David posted the video on YouTube and in just a couple of days has gone viral. That's proof, says the loonies, that David Hogg is a California resident and never lived in Florida. So why is any of this making news? And this idea spreads on YouTube, on Twitter, on Facebook, on all these social platforms. And when it's not met with the truth, then it spreads even more widely. YouTube took the video down, and many mainstream news organizations have debunked the notion that any of the Florida kids are actors. Even re-airing this video, Hogg took the day of the shooting. So right now we're in a school, an active shooter. It's not a drill. As NBC's Tom Brokaw tweeted, people who are accusing the students of being actors should be ostracized from the community. Fine, but what do you do when it's the first family? At first, I was surprised to see so many mainstream media outlets picking this up and debunking it. New York Times, a number of networks, the, the CNN did it. But then I thought, good. I mean, Brian Stelter is exactly right. You have to fight back. I can remember back when uh, Vince Foster, the attorney for um, the Clintons, committed suicide in a park in Washington, D.C., and there was all these conspiracy theorists out there that it was murder. It didn't matter how many stories you did debunking that. You know, it just came up and kept coming up. So you can't, you can't just let it go. The point is, you can't let it go. You have to fight back. I think you, you can't let it go, but I think you also have to recognize that you could uh, use every resource you have, and you'll never actually right. stamp out the last of those like claims. Vince Foster, just, still, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, Vince Foster. I mean, this was, uh, I happened to catch uh, David Hogg uh, was mm. interviewed. On, so uh, impressive. D- very eloquent, mm. um, thoughtful. But um, uh, the, the, the Southern California connection was, uh, <laughs> clearly, it was, he grew up in Southern California. Yeah. His father was an FBI agent. And when his father retired, they said they couldn't afford to live in Southern California on an FBI agent's retiree salary. That's why they moved yeah. to Parkland, Florida. <laughs> but he went back for the summer, and that's where the that early bizarre video incident came with a from. boogie board. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It's amazing how one person will say, "Well, then I think this must have happened, and that must have happened," and it's it's uh, they it's, weave uh, a thread, yeah. right? It's a rumor built on a rumor, and mm-hmm. and off it runs. I, you know, I used to never really worry about these things. I would think, well, these are crazy people out there putting out a lot of misinformation. But it concerns me that the public now has taken so much control of n- the narrative, where you're covering a breaking news story, and at the same time you have to you have to cover all of these other things that people are saying and debunking them. You know, is, is there an answer to this? I don't know that there's an easy answer. I do think that you have to be very careful when it comes to bringing on people on set or interviewing people and using some of this kind of information. Yes, we're debunking it, but sometimes some of that misinformation is happening in traditional newscasts. And that's one place that we can start. Make those decisions and say, you know what, we're just not going to put that person on the air because just by having them there and then talking about it, it can just continue to spread. It validates and spreads this. The, the, Hmm. The problem here is that The very fact that CNN, the New York Times, the Mm -hmm. Washington Post are debunking these conspiracy theories is held up as proof that the conspiracies are real because we all know that they're Mm -hmm. part of it. I mean, this is the way the conspiracy theorists think. And it's very hard to know what to do about that. I do think that we have to debunk it. I really don't know whether it's going to do much good. You know, I, I think about climate change denial, and I think that we had reached a point at which we were saying, 
um, we no longer have to take this seriously anymore. And then we end up with a president okay. who says it's a Chinese hoax. Mm -hmm. And so we have found that we've mm -hmm. had to go back yeah. and start asserting the point? reality of climate mm -hmm. change again. It's, it's, history is not forward motion. It's just the same thing over and over and over. You know, it's the same thing over and over, and the conspiracy-minded tendency is always there. But I think what's different today is... Uh, there is a whole parallel media infrastructure that pervades this stuff. We you know, talked mm -hmm. about Gateway Pundit in your package. Uh, InfoWars, obviously, is a huge one. And as you have mentioned, the president himself seems to have an affinity for uh, conspiracy-minded insinuation or theorizing. So I feel like as a matter of principle, yeah, the media should push back. And I don't think we're going to give it uh, any more oxygen than it already has, but I also don't think we're probably going to You know, succeed. I was struck this week, I was looking at a photograph of a child in a hospital from Syria that had been you know, okay. hit by one of the regime's own you know, bombs. And in the copy it said, AP has validated this. And I thought, wow, that's what it's come to. Yeah, right. You know, a photograph of a real human being, a child in a hospital, clearly severely injured, has to be validated because there are a lot of hoaxes that's out there. Right. There is that Damascus, Damascus girl, girl in Syria yeah, right. a few yeah. years ago. There has been a lot of propaganda that's come out of Syria. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but that's what it's come to. You yes. have to verify or debunk <laughs> as you go. And the, the problem being, again, the, uh, when I mentioned earlier that the public has taken control of the narrative, technology allows them to do this. Right? We didn't have to worry as much about pictures because not everybody could do Photoshop sitting on a laptop somewhere in the middle of nowhere. And so I think that's what makes the challenge so much more difficult because it isn't as simple as just, oh, well, we'll just check this out. Sometimes checking something out requires many different layers. Um, and, and so, I, I don't, again, I don't know that there are any easy answers to this, but I think the time of, of sitting back and saying, well, let's just ignore them, I don't know that that yeah, works either. Doesn't. Well, Mark Twain had it uh, down, <laughs> what, 100 years ago, where he said that a lie can be halfway around the world while the truth is still strapping on its shoelaces. Mm. But Martin Luther King said a lie cannot live forever. Well, one hopes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs>